ahead with the second presentation from uh, Dr. Capato from Milan. He will present the expert study of rivaroxaban versus vitamin K antagonist in patients with AFib undergoing elective cardioversion. Renato, uh, Ricardo, sorry. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, ladies, gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of my co-chair, Dr. Ezekovic, the various trials committee and the many investigators contributing uh, it is my privilege this morning to present you the data of expert. These are my disclosures. Cardioversion is a common procedure which is used worldwide to restore normal sinus rhythm in patients with atrial fibrillation. Without adequate anticoagulation, the periprocedural risk of thromboembolism, in other words, of clots detaching from the heart, traveling into the circulatory vessels, and reaching everywhere in the body, including the brain, is estimated to range between 5 and 7 percent. And it's reduced to 1 percent, about 1 percent, for patients receiving a vitamin K antagonist therapy. This is why vitamin K antagonists, uh, warfarin, are used uh, and represent the current standard of care before and after cardioversion with recent post hoc analysis from large trials on novel oral anticoagulants, suggesting and supporting the use of NOAX also in this setting, but in patients under chronic treatment with th this new therapy. Let me bring you through this apparently convoluted study protocol, which is only uh, like that in order for expert to possibly reflect the wide variability of medical behaviors that are undertaken whenever the decision of performing cardioversion is made in the individual patient. Patients were enrolled in expert if they were 18 years of age or older, had non-valvular atrial fibrillation lasting more than 48 hours or of unknown duration, and were scheduled according to clinical indication for cardioversion. Early and delayed cardioversions were allowed depending on the investigator's judgment, but the protocol recommended that for early uh, cardioversion to be undertaken, patients should at least be under adequate anticoagulation during the three weeks preceding randomization or should receive immediate transesophageal echo. There were 872 patients out of 1,504 patients randomized in the study who actually uh, underwent early cardioversion in expert. Uh, 632 underwent delayed cardioversion. Regardless of whether early or delayed cardioversion were undertaken in the individual patient, patients were then randomized to either rivaroxaban, 20 milligrams, once daily, which was reduced to 15 in patients with renal dysfunction, or dose-adjusted vitamin K antagonist according to a 2 to 1 randomization ratio. Cardioversion was then undertaken, and patients were followed for 42 days under the assigned drug treatment in the early and then the delayed cardioversion group. End of study was then declared and patients could be transitioned to the local standard of oral anticoagulation depending on clinical indication. There were 141 centers contributing across 16 countries to enroll patients in expert. Here are the primary outcomes of the study. The primary efficacy outcome was a composite of stroke, TIA, transient ischemic attack, peripheral embolism, myocardial infarction, and cardiovascular death. In other words, all clinical cardiovascular conditions which might be perceived as a consequence of a clot detaching from the heart, uh, traveling into the vessels, and causing a major damage into the body. The incidence of the pr uh, aggregate uh, primary efficacy outcome was 0.51% uh, in the rivaroxaban arm, and 1.02% in the vitamin K antagonist arm. It is important to know that only 10 patients in the study experienced at least one primary efficacy outcome. The risk ratio was 0.50 in favor of rivaroxaban, but the, the, the confidence interval was between 0.15 and 1.73. The, uh, the primary safety outcome was major bleeding and was a composite of bleedings, including fatal bleeding, critical site bleeding, bleeding causing hemoglobin drop, more than two gram per deciliters, and or requiring transfusion. There were 10 patients experiencing at least one bleeding episode in the trial. 
uh, of them, six out of 988 in the river oxaban arm, accounting for 0.61% incidence, and four out of 499 in the VKA arm. Remember the two to one randomization ratio of the study, accounting for 0.80. Uh, the risk ratio was 0.76 in favor of river oxaban and uh, confidence interval 0.21, 2.67. The contributory elements uh, for uh, major bleedings uh, were uh, similar in the two groups. In the early cardioversion group, the median time to cardioversion was similar in patients assigned to river oxaban as compared to patients assigned to VKA anta uh, antagonists. In the delayed group, conversely, uh, patients assigned to river oxaban presented with a significantly lower time to cardioversion, 22 days, as compared to patients uh, assigned to VKA, 30 days. So there was an eight days median difference in time to cardioversion. These data were reflected in, uh, uh, as shown in the right uh, panel, in a significantly larger proportion of patients in the river oxaban arm undergoing a cardioversion as scheduled, 77%, as compared to patients uh, in the VKA arm, 36%. Importantly, only one patient at the upper limit of the target time for delayed cardioversion, which was 56 days, presented with inadequate anticoagulation whereas during this same time frame, 95 patients in the VKA arm presented with inadequate anticoagulation and could not, therefore, be uh, cardioverted. So in conclusion, uh, EXVERT is the first prospective randomized trial of a novel or anticoagulant in patients with atrial fibrillation undergoing elective cardioversion. Uh, treatment with rivaroxaban during the perioperative phase was associated with low and similar incidences of primary efficacy outcome events between the treatment groups. And the same held true for major bleeding. The time for two cardioversion was similar in the early cardioversion strategy or significantly shorter in the delayed strategy using rivaroxaban compared with VKA. We may conclude that oral rivaroxaban at 20 milligram once daily appears to be an effective and safe alternative to VKA and to allow prompt elective cardioversion in patients with atrial fibrillation. The possibility to program delayed cardioversion would result in a significant uh, impact in logistic and health co cost economics in this specific uh, case, and clearly would affect patients' perception of programmability and well-being as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ricardo. We have now about four to five minutes for questions to uh, Dr. Capato. Yes, please. Can you state your name and the communications for which and, you and Perhaps will... just before we have the first question, uh, Ricardo, it's my understanding that we want to be clear that this is um, not a trial of, of early versus delayed no. because that was clinician decision. So it's in the two strategies. Uh, that's correct, isn't it? That, that's correct. The study was intended to investigate whether, regardless of the cardioversion strategy and the paths followed in the individual patient, giving an anticoagulation protection in all cases with novel or anticoagulants would result in an incidence or risk exposure of these patients, which was similar to that observed with the current standard of care. And I think the study proved this uh, evidence. Sure, yes. Okay. Peter Henning, thrombosis and hemostasis. In rivaroxaban, due to the short half-life time of rivaroxaban, how did you uh, measure adequate anticoagulation? <laughs> it's a very good question. Um, the decision was taken for this specific purpose that the pill count would, would be used as a reference in the individual patient. And the threshold of pill count um, assumption by the sim single patient in order to judge the, the presence of adequate uh, anticoagulation was higher than 80% assumption. Salim? No, okay, no question. Okay. I have a question. Uh, what was the minimum time in the early strategy uh, for the rivaroxaban patients uh, um, in that uh, how many times they took rivaroxaban before they were cardioverted? What was the, what the minimum time? The target times uh, between randomization and cardioversion were one to five days in the early group and 21 to 56 in the delayed group. The last, 
uh, a condition for patients assigned to um, rivaroxaban and undergoing early uh, cardioversion, a single dose of uh, uh, oral rivaroxaban could be taken at least four hours prior to cardioversion. Okay. And was it um, combined with heparin? N uh, it was discouraged, but we observed okay. some uh, centers using uh, uh, bridging with heparin, and the percentage is 5% okay. in the early group. And in uh, transesophageal echo, did you do that in the early, early group? The incidence of patients receiving transesophageal echo was 60% in the early and 10% in the delay. We also sure. observed investigators uh, using tra transesophageal echo in the delayed group. And it's my understanding <clears throat> that to qualify for the early group, they had to either have a transesophageal echo or show that they had, what was it, three? Adequate anticoagulation was meant by uh, three consecutive blots, weekly taken weekly blood taken. sample, uh, okay. showing an INR value between two and three. Okay. If that was not matched, that was not a criterion, but it was, a, 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 let's say, encouraged by the protocol. Yes, sir. Um, Steve Stiles at theheart.org. Um, I just wanted to clarify something on the, the fourth conclusion that's listed here at the t on the time to cardioversion issue. If the time to cardioversion was similar on the early strategy, but there seemed to be um, an advantage in being able to shorten the time to cardioversion using the long strategy, doesn't that mean that the shorter strategy is more appropriate for vitamin K antagonists, and that practice, current practice where you wait, where you do it for three weeks is maybe waiting too long? Uh, well, if we want to be speculative, yes. But the truth is that cardioversion by uh, a clinician is, is a situation in, in, in which you have to judge individually. And an individual patient, you may, and, and because of the logistic condition at your hospital, let's assume you don't have a transesophageal echo available and the patient was not under adequate anticoagulation prior to atrial fibrillation, then you are in some way forced to move to delayed cardioversion. In that circumstances, you are forced to that solution. And whenever you take the decision uh, to undergo delayed cardioversion, having the possibility to reduce the time and to program with a high level of accuracy the time when to perform delayed cardioversion may have unavoidable advantages. Okay, and one other question. In the a European Heart Journal publication, there's the remark that the study was underpowered for the conclusions that it's making. Um, so I'm sort this of is, wondering what sort of message we should be getting from that. This, this is a very important point that you're making. Uh, the sample size that was calculated to generate a conclusive study to show non-inferiority uh, required between 25 and 30,000 patients. And this is because the incidence of expected event in the comparator arm was 1%. A study of this size was not feasible. It would require too much time and it would be too expensive. R so, uh, Ricardo, my understanding is the upper bound of the 95% confidence interval, uh, I guess, was 1.17? Yes. So it's for like for and efficacy. 1.27 for safety. 1.27 for safety. So the study would suggest that the result is below that. This is okay. all what, what the study can do. But it's the best that we can do under the enormous limitation that this biological condition preserved and still was an unmet needs that we thought to partly be able to answer through this study. For it supports the and extends the information that we currently have available for novel or anticoagulants in the setting of cardioversion, uh, but uh, uh, it also provides uh, evidence for those who are already using. You should be aware that many physicians are already switching to novel or anticoagulants for cardioversion despite the absence of any information. We thought that bringing this level of solid, methodologically sound information would provide more consistent evidence for those who are doing this, and a little bit more evidence for those who may be reluctant. Uh, we've got time for one more question. Yeah. Um, Melissa Walton, Shirley with theheart.org. So since not everyone got a transesophageal echo, can't the data, the outcomes be confounded? I mean, couldn't it be that more people had fewer left atrial appendage thrown by, and they got in the group with the rivaroxaban if they didn't? I mean, couldn't, 
shouldn't everyone have gotten a TEE just to sort of prove the point with this trial? Previous, a previous study called ACUTE in 2001 has randomized TEE versus VKA, showing essentially superimposable incidences of efficacy and safety outcome events. From then, guidelines recommend that these two conditions, either adequate anticoagulation or immediate transesophageal ECO, be performed in order to secure the highest degree of protection of these patients. And we should yet still be aware that some of these patients will, never, will nevertheless experience some of these events. It's a very low incidence, though. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. As I said at the